three, two, one. Do it, Sean. Guy, remember to have fun, you know. <laughs> Just I gotta remember that this is not a job, it's fun. Okay, That's right. guys. Well, I quit anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yeah. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names in the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were gonna take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house, but there was something truly special about driving past the shirtless saxophone concert, arriving at your video rental store, picking a movie out by hand, and taking it home with you. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two dudes who came this close to be calling mo- to be called Moonbeam. Damn it. Moonbeam. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. Two dudes who came this close to being called Moonbeam. Sean Pryor and AJ Vince, how the heck are ya? I mean, it's band? Uh, what are we doing our, our shoegaze band? Sh- shoegaze? Called, called Moonbeam? Moonbeam. Is I would listen to that. Shoegaze or shoegazi? Shoegazi. Which one is it? So we're, we're kind of a more, we play yeah. Fugazi songs, but on like Fender... Jazz masters and really okay. shoegaze style. Yes, like like a weird cover. Yes. Wow. Uh, by the way, I figured out that if you just do this with your collar, they can't you you can't get bitten by a vampire. There you go. So it's just, so it's that's so, why you look like this. Yes, it's like it's like covers on a bed with the boogeyman. You can't get you if you're covered. I don't know why vampirism was so rampant in Santa Cruz in the '80s because everyone was popping their collar. Duh. Mm-hmm. See. That's the thing, bro. We shouldn't even do this movie. We just and the, it. <laughs> and the mullets covering the back there already. You go. Come on. Damn. <laughs> well, boys, on this episode, we discuss a movie that spawned two completely unwatchable sequels. <laughs> a movie that unfortunately made everyone love vampire romance. Yeah. A movie that set the record for the most times that the name Michael is said in a film. 118 times. Michael. We are, of course, <laughs> Michael. That's all they say. Michael. We are, of course, talking about 1987's The Lost Boys. Yeah. <laughs> and in order to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, start with you. Tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your nostalgic rating is from that beautiful day in 1987. Bring it in. This was on TNT. <laughs> Spooktacular October. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably what they thought. Up what all night. Called. Something, yeah, like up all night October. Because you're scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck going to sleep, <laughs> dumb kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know man like I I was definitely watching it with uh with with my brother Bob and and we were we would watch this and it just there are parts that live in my brain as as much rent much free. scarier yes and rent free yes. just uh like way scarier than they actually were probably but um like I specifically remember how terrified I was with like the the big bad reveal um, the garlic bath, like the steak, the blood, just everything. Uh, very terrifying. So zero. Very scary. <laughs> so spooky. <laughs> um, no, but it, not a zero because, like, for some reason, it it this was like what made this is what made it's just like what three ninjas did for me and my brothers. Like three ninjas, we would pack those pepper bombs, you know, and like hide them. So then bad guys came over. Or like like on this, we'd have garlic around, so that way, when vampires came around during October, we were prepared for the vamps. <laughs> so it was it was very influential. So I will actually I'm going to go ahead and give this as far as spooky movies go a seven point three. Shit, wow. Sean, what do you got nostalgically, buddy? Uh, I think I watched this movie at my babysitter's house, uh, where she also showed us Red Dawn mm-hmm. and uh, When a Stranger Calls. Oh yeah. Uh, fun, great, great Jesus. stuff. Great stuff to watch when you're nine. She's yeah. still babysitting. In fact, you can go to myworstbabysitter.com dot com <laughs> and rent your time for your kid. She's a vampire. Yeah, she yeah. is. A, she's an <laughs> eternal being, and she's probably just pissed that she got vampired. 
She yeah, had a thing it. for blood, that's for sure. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say like a, I was scared of it for sure. I'd say like probably a 5.6. Because let's get this straight. You love horror movies now, but back in the day was like a no-go. Terrified. For you, right? I had to like, if I watched one uh, like randomly, like I said on the show before, if my brother was watching one, I couldn't live with the fact that he was watching it by himself. <laughs> And so I had to call my parents and be like, he's watching a scary movie. And Can't then, do it. And then, uh, little brother, get out of here, little brother. It, it explains the beatings I got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of like I'm sort of like both of you guys mixed together. I definitely remember this like rent free in my brain of certain scenes, but I don't think I ever voluntarily like watched it all the way through at a young age until like it was like senior in high school, early yeah. college, something like that. But nostalgically, like it seems so cool, but it's also kind of a little too scary. It's like yeah. not something I would go rent and say I got to get this movie. So kind of a kind of a six nostalgically for yeah. me. We got executive producer Josh Miller. He says I've been really hoping for you guys to do the Lost Boys for a while. Right. Really since I listened to the Stand by Me episode, and I really dug when Mike was talking about the fan theory of Ace from Stand by Me is David from the Lost Boys. I love this movie as a kid. I was around 10 or so when it came out. My best friend and next door neighbor watched this so many times. Unlike Explorers and vaguely remembering but was or sorry, do that again. Unlike Explorers and vaguely remembering but what but was wrong. Oh, God damn it. I should have read this before he wrote it. <laughs> Let's see. But was wrong. Oh yeah. Unlike Explorers and vaguely remembering but was wrong about one of the core. Okay. Unlike Explorers and vaguely remembering but was wrong about one of the Corys in it, this one has both. Can I make my suggestion for a no November movie choice? The other movies of the 80s with the Corys, License to Drive. Wow. Another one I loved growing up. If not, I can come up with something else. Back to business. <laughs> this movie, while I loved it, I can't give a good reason or reasons as to why. Maybe it was just the plot, vampires, vampire hunting. It was certainly not because of the cast. At that time, I didn't know who any of them were. I do know, not long after seeing this movie, my mom took her, my sister, and myself on a road trip from Spokane, Washington, to Anaheim, California, to go to Disneyland. And I so badly wanted to go to Santa Carla, only to find from my mom that it wasn't a place, and she didn't realize that it was filmed and based on Santa Cruz. My hopes and dreams were destroyed. Past <laughs> this, I've got nothing but my nostalgia score score is 8.0 that takes us to a 6.58 for a nostalgic mm. score as we ah, said it really doesn't mean too much it's pretty much all over the place but that's uh what i say 6.58 is just above speed just below blood sport <laughs> <laughs> that's a great company I, I don't i don't know i feel like i would have <laughs> watched the other ones more than i would have watched this i one. definitely did yeah <laughs> I wanted to watch Bloodsport way more. I wanted to watch, I wanted <laughs> Definitely. To, you, you give me the romance and speed rather than this romance. Yeah, that's boys. what I'm saying. Yeah. All I need is a little coom mate coom mate coom And the useless romance in Bloodsport. <laughs> yeah. Completely. Oh, you, hey, you get, you get a gorgeous shot of a perched Van Damme ass. That's all you need, baby. That's all you <laughs> Van Damme need. That sells. That sells, baby. Well, we know you have at least one friend who loves this movie just as much as you do. Hit the little share icon on your podcast app. Directly message it to them. That is the best way you can support this. Totally free and easy to do. Don't forget to go to our brand new website, ConfusedBreakfast.com. Grab some merch. And finally, if you're caught up on all the episodes, you're looking for more, you can go to our YouTube channel, watch us for a totally different experience, or you can support us on Patreon for more than 80 hours of bonus audio. Vote on upcoming movies private discord server it is all there at patreon.com slash confused breakfast next it's time to learn all the pertinent important details of the movie sean that's your job let's hear it man produced by harvey bernhard and john hyde and richard donner uh story by jan fisher and james jeremus <laughs> screenplay by jan fisher james jeremus and jeffrey boehm you know, you gave me shit about making up names. Yeah, I think the, like last episode. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're on par. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I can't make up a. I didn't. I didn't make up Richard Donner. All the other ones, maybe. <laughs> maybe right. they're interchangeable. I don't right. know. Right. Um, cinemato cinematography by Michael Chapman. Uh, also did Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Scrooged. Kindergarten Cop and Space Jam. That might be the weirdest, uh, <laughs> like, you know, what do you call that, a resume? Yeah. Yeah, that might be the strangest. It's quite the span. <laughs> it is crazy. I, I found that out, while, it, well, obviously doing the research, and I'm like, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, 
I heard like, I was watching a video and the guy was saying that, and then I was like, "Well, I want to go see what else he did." Fucking Space Jam, Kindergarten Cop, and Space Jam. <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. looking movie. <laughs> Music by Thomas Newman, directed by Joel Schumacher. Cast: Jason Patrick, Corey Haim, Diane West, Bernard Hughes, Ed- Edward Herman, Jamie Gertz, J- Jameson <laughs> Newlander, <laughs> Bernard, <laughs> <laughs> Alex Winter, Corey Feldman, and Kiefer Sutherland. For some reason, at the time. Peter Pan was a, as was a very popular in media, and studios wanted to try and get their version of that famous story out. I don't know why. Yeah, why? Um, the reading, the writing team of Jan Fisher and James Jeremis, they're definitely people, <laughs> had a treatment ready to go. And what made their version different was Peter Pan was a vampire. The version would be a PG rated, rated kids film involving kids. Okay. Uh, one or, so it would have been like. Peter Pan was a vampire, and he like got his lost boys were just like yeah. in his vampire lair. Yeah, wouldn't that be a cool twist? God no. Warner Brothers got Richard Donner involved pitching it to him as the Goonies, but with vampires. After the project was essentially in development hell, Donner lost interest. He oh he's he said that he has uh, done this before, where people offer him something, and he starts getting in the involvement into it. It starts to go. Uh. Starts developing it, but once it starts like. Oh, what what if we do this? Too many cooks in the kitchen, kind of thing. He's like, I'm out. I I, guess, I'm can't do it. I was gonna say, I wonder if it's based on like his own influence and involvement, and he's like, oh, I'm starting to realize this isn't a good idea. Yeah. Or if it's like you've got too many people here and everybody wants their ideas, I'm just gonna take a step back. Yeah, sort of like when Jeremy used to produce our podcast, and he was like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. you know, that was the same thing. He just sort of went, I don't like where this is going. Too many yeah. cooks. <laughs> After like, Rich, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> no. I miss you, Jeremy. You're you're cool, bro. You're cool, man. <laughs> after Ri- tall. Richard you're Franklin tall. and Mary Lambert were sought after, but eventually fell out of the directing job, Donner, still attached to the project along with his wife, suggested Joel Schumacher. Coming fresh off of St. Elmo's Fire, yeah. Schumacher didn't feel like the script for his sensibilities, didn't feel the script for his sensibilities, not wanting to make a kid's film, essentially. He yeah. didn't want to make a kid's, kid's movie. So he suggested that the characters were teens instead and that the that it be rated R, also following classic vampire tropes with new hip kids in the cast. That is a great choice that he yes. made right there. Casting went somewhat with, somewhat without a hit. Schumacher wanted Jason Patrick for the lead role, but Patrick turned him down several times, eventually being convinced. Patrick uh, suggested Jamie Gertz for the role, uh, of Star because they had worked together on worked with each other on Solar Babies and had uh, really good chemistry. Diane Weist had just won an Oscar, so Schumacher didn't think he could get her at all, but uh, she agreed like, right away. In. Let's do it. I, she was like, "That sounds fun." Schumacher saw Kiefer Sutherland in At Close Range and didn't think he was in the movie enough. He wanted to see what Sutherland could do with a straight up villain. He just came off of Stand by Me, uh, so he got a little bit of a taste of that, right. but. He wanted to see him like with something with a little bit more meat, something with a little bit more fantasy, something more Schumacher, you could say. Warner Brothers originally gave the production a rumored twenty million, but after they saw that Schumacher cast almost all unknown actors at the time, they said he had to either recast or he had to recast or the budget be cut. Schumacher loved and believed in his cast so much that he refused to recast. The studio then cut the film's budget from twenty million to eight point five million. <laughs> That's es- more than half. Essentially. Hey, let's cut it 60%. You guys are good with that, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. It's sounds good. Have fun. From that budget, from what he had in mind, he's, he's essentially is like, gonna, I'm, I'm going to have to go like indie roots, you know? Like which, which probably ended up, again, was probably a better choice for this. Yeah. Like, cause, uh, we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was sort of like, uh, there's a movie we did in the past. I'm, I wish I would have thought about this ahead of time, but it's uh, where they ended up not showing the villain in the ways they wanted to show the villain. It yeah. had to be more imaginative. Jaws. Was that more Jaws? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly yeah, what that yeah. was. Where that, had they ended up showing that shark from start to finish, it wouldn't have been the same movie. Definitely. Yeah, yeah the limitations make you more creative. Uh, the film began shooting June 2nd, 1986, and ended the 23rd that same month. <laughs> yeah. Mostly <laughs> shot in Santa Cruz, Damn. California, with some shots mostly interior shot in Warner Brothers Studio a lot. The Lost Boys re- was released on July 31st, 1987 at the number two spot at the box office with its cut budget of 8.5. The, the film grossed $32.2 million, garnered two sequels, two comic book series, and has gone on to become a staple of 80s cinema and is always in lists for the best vampire movies of all time. Well, cool. I'm, I'm sure they were very stoked to cut that budget. Yeah. 
him. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I mean, they triple down. I mean, yeah. You know, shit. Good move. Well, up next, we got AJ. He does the research for us, hooks us up with the ratings and reviews of critics and fans alike. What do you got, AJ? Guys, let's bring it up. Let's bring it down. Bring let's it up, take bring it, it down. all around with the tomato, the tomato meter. meter. Yeah. Red, it's bloody. Gross. It's gross. Okay. I was going to say gross, and then I knew it was coming. I yeah. love it. Uh, 77% certified fresh all from right. the tomato meter critical reviews. Cool. If you want to know of all the movies we've done, we're now over a hundred movies. Uh, that ranks slightly below fast times, slightly above cool runnings and goonies below fast times above. Cool fast runnings. times is a 78 lost boys is a 77 goonies and cool runnings are 76 goonies huh. is, goonies a, is, is below, below. This, is, is, per the critics. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> Right. Richard Donner would be like, I, if I directed it, let's talk. Yeah. Let's, I would have been up above. They let's, thought he did. Let's <laughs> prove them wrong. Uh, maybe? I don't know. 85% from the audience uh, at Rotten Tomatoes. And IMDb comes in at a 7.2. We got a lot that landed on 7.2. We have Speed, GoldenEye, Tremors, Major League, and The Lost Boys. All 7.2. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Tremors like Tremors feels right. That feels like a double feature. Oh too. yeah, I would love Tremors that. and Lost Boys. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't know why Speed just seems so right. Speed <laughs> Speed's <laughs> always right. I don't know. Speed is all fe- Speed fits with any movie. Thank you. Yes. yes. <laughs> just just let me trash out on some Golden Eye. <laughs> like I would be okay with that. <laughs> that was one of my lowest rated movies. I know, by the way. dude. I hated that movie. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, I think I did too. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. I'd I'd watch it right now though. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, how about a couple of critical reviews of uh, of what gave it that score? A uh, hundred out of a hundred, the AV Club. I bet they were factored in. I don't know. Um, yeah, Nathan Rabin at AV Club. He said Corey Haim plus Corey Feldman plus Joel Schumacher doesn't seem like a foolproof formula for a good movie. But when the three off maligned figures united for 1978's. <laughs> 19, <laughs> 1987's horror comedy, The Lost Boys, the result was briskly entertaining. Briskly entertaining. For 100 yeah. out of 100, briskly entertaining is like... <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's 100 out of 100. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that, that feels like a fall breeze. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> when you go outside and like you feel a breeze, like, I should put a jacket on. That's, that's all he thought about the movie. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but it's 100 out of 100. But he loves fall, so. Yeah. yeah. yeah it felt right, I guess. <laughs> I, found a, I found like a, 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 lot of, a lot of reviews on this. You can't, it's tough to find them again. Like you can see, you can find excerpts, but you can't find entire reviews. <laughs> People so are deleting reviews the because lowest they one. know you're going to find them. <laughs> <laughs> is that what's going that on? That is amazing. We finally reached the pinnacles. Wait, here we are, guys. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> I don't want AJ Vins a confused breakfast to find my review from Find 84. them and destroy them. <sighs> uh, uh, so I had seen like a 10 out, a 10 out of uh, 100, and I wanted to read it, and I was like, wow, this is extremely disinteresting. It's not interesting at all. So I took Dave Kerr from the Chicago Tribune. He gave a 50 out of 100. He said, Schumacher's work in The Lost Boys consists of turning undertones into overtones, uh, of taking the le- of taking the latent, the implied and the mysterious, and turning them into the loud and the obvious. He takes a story and turns it into a bunch of scenes, each of which contains its own payoff, and none of which seems to draw on what has come before. And in these days of concept films, a story is a terrible thing to waste. <laughs> I want... I want a romantic comedy with like Jim Carrey <laughs> and like Meg Ryan called the the loud and the obvious. The loud and the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Green light it. Hey Bert, green light that please. <laughs> you get that green light? Thanks. <laughs> Much obliged. <laughs> uh I found I found some some fun ones that I really wanted to roll with, but uh I uh, first and foremost, I didn't I didn't go for the uh, actual review, but somebody in twenty fifteen uh, the title of their 10 out of 10 review was, I finally figured out why I love the film so much. All right, cool. And I'm like, and I just thought to myself, because of Lost Boys? That was what did it. <laughs> so, hey, all I've right. i always loved that, movies, but why? But why? <laughs> and then I found Lost Boys. <laughs> wow. Hell yes. He, he gave a long, long, long scene by scene, like, you're, breakdown. And you're not going to I'm it. like, you know what? We I just, am bored. We should, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we should break his down? <laughs> yeah, we should do his. Replace all of our notes with his. <laughs> 
great. Um, how about how about this? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna give you the bad first, I think, and then I'll give you the good. Uh, one out of ten. Dig for crap. More crap. A hundred feet of crap. A hundred more. There you'll find the Lost Boys. <laughs> Said so good looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey, what was the name of your guy from your live from the live podcast? It was like like something like <laughs> Devin Plarkin, <laughs> <laughs> Slick Dickens. It's my new name from here on out. If anybody asks me, my Devin name is Plarkin. Devin Plarkin. <laughs> Devin Plarkin. <laughs> David Plurkin. <laughs> we'll get a random email sometime that'll be like, it's P. Larkin, asshole. <laughs> Devin P. Larkin. <laughs> Devin Plurkin was a regular guy. <laughs> Until the confused breakfast <laughs> chain made, made, made fun of his name. Uh, so, uh, so, so good looking had this to say. And I, I, imagined, I imagined this one with, uh, with a thin cigarette and a glass of wine <laughs> in the same hand. <laughs> like, while he's reading this. <laughs> Very Stifler's mom from, from American Pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I imagined it, so I'm just going to try. Uh, <laughs> yes. Congratulations to director Joel Schumacher. I guess, in the clouding reviewer's mind... Minds to the point where even the astute Roger Ebert could call this dross well acted. <laughs> Corey Haim in a bubble bath yipping to bad 50s pop. Middle aged Diane Weist sporting the world's worst haircut and the most desi- as the most desirable woman on earth to be the vampire king's queen. Poor Edward Herman <laughs> giving in to the paycheck. And bad comedy horror intercut throughout with truly bad, unfunny grandpa taxidermist sitcom drivel. The absolute worst of everything. Shame on everyone involved. No, wait, no. Is there a way to drink and <laughs> yeah, smoke yeah. at the same time? <laughs> Can you inhale through your nostril while, while you're drinking? Is that possible? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> he, he wipes the Cheetos on his naked thighs because he's in his mom's basement, his, clearly. His naked, his pantsless thighs. <laughs> if someone out there can do that, please, please send us share a video of it. Uh, but I, I always love finding the, the people who, like, who are just absolutely in, involved with this movie 100%. So my last one is a 10 out of 10. Truly the greatest movie ever okay. by Kitten Boo 9 in 2006. <laughs> Warning! Spoilers. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. This is truly the greatest movie ever. Kiefer Sutherland is such an astounding actor. Warning, this movie contains the hottest guys in the 80s. Whoopsie. <laughs> Oops. I think, at least. <laughs> That's, That's what, what she says. I like how they second-guess themselves <laughs> in the review. Well, maybe. But anyway. <laughs> there uh, is Rob Well, it's, it's my personal opinion in my own review. Uh. Shocker. It is Rob Lowe. Technically, he's in the movie. Yeah, technically. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's too bad they killed them all off. I think everyone should see this movie at least once. If you are into good movies of the 80s, then this is one on your, then this is one on your list, or at least should be. I also wonder whatever happened to Jason Patrick. <laughs> Billy Ridge. Speed 2 happened to Jason McCarter. Patrick. Brooke <laughs> McCarter. Speed 2. <laughs> Uh, also, the attire is to die for. <laughs> the most memorable part of the bo- movie was when David, Paul, Dwayne, Billy, Marco were in the tree, were, were in the tree, and called Michael over to the tree and vamped out and killed all those surf Nazis while trying to get Michael to turn into one of them, but Michael didn't. Truly the greatest. <laughs> That was the best part of the movie. And that was the truly the greatest part of the movie. <laughs> but why why start that paragraph with the attire is to die for? <laughs> 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 Surprise! And and uh yeah, I guess that was a spoiler. Because it wasn't their vampire teeth and their strength that killed that this the surf Nazis. It was their attire yes. that right. really truly brought them to their knees. Yeah. Truly. They were they were just stunned dead with the with the shock of their <laughs> gorgeous yeah. attire. Well, is that all you got, Age? That's all I got, babe. Well, we got to give a shout out to our friends at Cedar Ridge Distillery. The last episode you heard was live there, and it couldn't have been at a better place. We all drank copious amounts of whiskey with our friends. 
And it was amazing. In fact, uh, they are taking the world by storm. We know this. Up Rocks just put out an article that was entitled Best Bottle of Whiskey from Each of the 50 States. Obviously, Cedar Ridge was the whiskey from Iowa. But Got what to. bottle were they going to pick? Was it going to be the bourbon? Was it going to be the Slipknot? They went American, uh, quintessential American single malt is mm. what they chose. Really? Uh, and they actually had a good writing. I don't know if this came from Cedar Ridge or if they wrote this. But here, in case you've been wanting to try the single malt, the quintessential American single malt, this is what they said on how it's made. They said, this whiskey is all about a grain-to-glass experience. The juice is made with 100% two-row pale malted barley, the same stuff used in some of the biggest craft beers from up in Saskatchewan. The whiskey is matured in X bourbon barrels for an undisclosed term. That whiskey is then finished in a combination of brandy, rum, wine, port, and sherry barrels before it's vatted. The whiskey's blend is then made using the Solera method, where the vat is never fully empty before the next barrel is added. Uh, it's just amazing how intricate the process of making whiskey is. Yes. And these guys have absolutely perfected it. They're in our back door here in Swisher, Iowa. It's called Cedar Ridge Whiskey, Cedar Ridge Distillery. You can uh, get them in your store kind of around the Midwest. They're expanding. If you can't get them in your store, you can order them online directly to your door, cedarridgewhiskey.com. Just go get it. Like, seriously. Yeah. I uh, I love all their products, and all of our fans have been buying it and loving it as well. So it's so cool to to just keep spreading the word of Cedar Ridge out into the world. And they sponsor this podcast, and we're grateful. I bought a bottle of the Slipknot uh, Essential, or the number nine uh, cask the other day, fuck? and it's it's pretty great. Yeah. yeah, just spit it out, but don't spit it out because it's very good. <laughs> uh, CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Yeah. Well, boys, what do you say that we head up to the boardwalk in Santa Carla? They got roller coasters, merry-go-rounds, comic book stores, and a video rental store. Oh, cool. We can see the sights, go to a concert, and maybe even meet some new friends. Seems like a totally normal town, and I'm sure nothing remotely weird will happen while we're there. Nah. Here we go. Sweet. So following the divorce of their parents, Michael and Sam Emerson moved to Santa Carla, California with their mom to live with their grandfather. Known as the murder capital of the world, Santa Carla boasts a local boardwalk where a number of young people hang out. When the Emersons go out to the boardwalk for the first time, Lucy finds a video store run by a man named Max and is hired to work there. Sam finds a comic book shop near the boardwalk overseen by the Frog Brothers, Edgar and Alan. Can I, can I start this? Unless somebody's interested, I want to start this out. Hit it. This is a very this is a very quintessential moment of our podcast because when you think of things from the 80s and movies we've done you think of these unbelievably iconic songs that like live in your brain because they are part of a movie. You've got Don't You Forget About Me, Simple Minds Breakfast Club. Mm. Like when you hear that song you think Breakfast Club. Yep. Sweet Emotion, Aerosmith, Days and Confused, Danger Zone, Kenny Loggins, Top Gun, Power of Love, Huey Lewis, Back to the Future. These songs and movies elevate each other into the echelon of perfection. This movie does the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard. I was, just, I was about to just be like, God, that was gorgeous. That was man. beautiful. <laughs> Gerard McMahon's Cry Little Sister is the worst song I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and they play it 10 times in this movie. In fact, it's so bad. <laughs> Never, ever get a choir of young children and put them on your song. I hate it. It's yeah. and, and they play it ten fucking times. Tell that to yeah. Pink Floyd. Dude, it's so many <laughs> so many people have covered this song, by the way. Even the fantastic churches did a cover of this, and it's still not great because the song is so bad itself. And here's even crazier. There's a prequel musical that's been in development since 2017, and in oh, July no. 2020, composer Gerard McMahon... <laughs> Stated the musical is almost done and will pre premiere in 2022. A fucking musical prequel to The Lost Boys written by the guy who wrote Cry Little Sister. He's he's calling himself a composer now. Yes. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm sure there are people that think that song is is in the echelon of the vi of the songs I've said. Yeah. No. I, uh, I am never a fan of any children singing or doing anything that I love. I don't want them there. I don't want. I don't want. I don't ever want them there unless you know they're my friends or they're my own. I don't know them, and I don't know why they're in the beginning of a movie that I like. <laughs> um, they should just leave, and they're not going to, and they're never going to because it's put to celluloid. I <laughs> I agree with you. I think that it could be a good song. It I think like been. the melody is good. I think I like when I think of 
Lost Boys, I think of this yeah, song, of and course. vice versa. Um, but yeah, I, I'm never into that. Even the, the 80s noises, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's got the. It's just really bad. It's one of those songs where it's like, hey, we need a theme for this. If you wouldn't <laughs> mind just throwing something together, it'd be fun. It, you know, obviously we're in the eighties, so some synth pop would be a lot of fun if you could do something like that. But just make it dark. It's like, da shall not. It's like you do not need to do that. Put much. some Bible verses in there, please. Yeah. Uh, well, I bet it was. I bet it was the composer just like at his desk, like just completely debilitated. <laughs> he has like a day left, and he's just like. <sighs> Okay, I'm a, <laughs> it's either I come up with something right now or I'm going to fucking kill myself. He's sitting in a hotel, <gasps> and he sees the Bible. <laughs> he just has a piano. He's like, dun, 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 dun. Just down the neck. <laughs> just, just, oh, oh. Just sh- down the keyboard of, of the piano. That's all you got to do. <laughs> oh, like, you get a children's choir. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, kids, could you sing this for me real quick just to see how it sounds? I just want to see as it is. Luckily, there was a children's choir staying in the next hotel rooms over, <laughs> and I went down after reading the Bible for inspiration <laughs> that was in the drawer. I stole that, but then I went down the way. Everyone steals them. And then, did you guys did you guys see the lyrics of the chorus? Essentially, did you read the chorus? No. It's uh, "Cry, little sister, yeah, thou shall not fall. Come, come to your brother, thou shall not die." <laughs> Unchain me, sister. Thou shall not fear. Love is with your brother. Thou shall not kill. <laughs> so you know, I ugh. it just seems <laughs> like a like a video that you watch you late at night it, by yourself. Stock porn. Yes. <laughs> if, if they, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Hear but what I also said. like a like a, with a flavor of Jim Morrison in there. It just sounds like a Jim Morrison song, which will which is a, a theme of the movie. If this song wasn't dangly earrings, long weird hair, and blowy white shirts, if that wasn't the probably the music video to this, um, then I just uh, maybe you could get away with lyrics like this that it's not so suggestive. But the way that the tone of this music. That is not okay to just talk about uh, brother and sister like that. (laughs) Apparently, he wrote this for the film. He knew what the script was, so that doesn't even make sense. (sighs) Let's keep talking about the soundtrack. I (laughs) also hate, I also very much hate the People Are Strange cover. uh, From uh, Echo and the Bunnymen? Yes. Like, why? Okay, camera, I am am in a cover (laughs) band called the Pork Tornadoes. We make covers of songs, but we change them up. If you're not going to change it up, why don't you just hear the original? So why don't we just put the doors in? Because it's the exact same song, just with a worse singer, if you can believe it. Yeah. Well, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I agree. We had this discussion, actually, <laughs> on, with Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. That Jeff Healy did a better job with Almost Roadhouse every song. Blues. <laughs> Yeah, with Roadhouse Blues yeah, specifically. I uh, think he did. Personally. I think that's a more apt argument to have. You could say that it's blasphemy, obviously. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is also blasphemy. Uh, not what you're saying. I agree with you. I why did why not get the song? He like Joel Schumacher knew Ray Manzarek, the keyboard slash uh, Rhodes could player. Could have been like, dude, and we're putting it in the movie. he was producing Echo Echo and the Bunnymen at the time. And he's like, hey, can you get them to do like a thing? I guess he wanted like an updated kind of yeah. hip kids version. Yeah. Okay. You know, but yeah. that's All right. I, I just get the version. Yeah. I love that song. You know, why not? What, do you like? Do you not like? I know. I, I like the Doors. I like that song, but it's just like it's just. It just all hits me wrong. We're talking modern day critical review. This whole thing hits me wrong. Okay. They like this is a shitty cover of a song that's like okay. <sighs> And then it's also just like, look, they're strange people, and the lyrics are people are strange. Yeah. Oh my god! Look at look at look at uh, look, look at that it. guy's got a nose ring. Ooh, he's got a mohawk. Get a get a get a Ooh. shot of him. Ooh. Get a shot of that guy. They just walked around like the boardwalk, just like yeah, that guy looks weird. Get a camera on him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like what are you and doing? They, they sent out the the PAs to go get the the signatures. <laughs> yeah, from them. Yeah, I, d- I do. Those. I do they like did. when we so we're like introduced right away to the Lost Boys. Oh yeah, the tribe. Uh, Kiefer Sullivan and his gang, uh, along with Alex Winter and whoever the hell doesn't else matter. Um, I do, I do like it's kind of like a slow mo. They're just like on the carousel and everything, but they have that fight. They have like the confrontation yeah. between somebody that doesn't matter. It's the surf Nazis. It is the surf Nazi. Okay. Well, I think he's a surf Nazi. Okay. Like they're, on the carousel, he yeah. like somebody straight up 
like pushes that girl's face yeah. that he's with. The boyfriend does. Yeah. Like hard, like for real. And like in <laughs> camera, like no, no screen screen. <laughs> no green screen. <laughs> like literally assaulted a woman on camera. And I was like, I didn't like that. That didn't feel right. Oof. Yeah, that's not okay. I hope like the like they're just extras. Yeah. I hope that they like were comfortable with each other. Anyway. <laughs> I, anyway. I just <laughs> it was a beautiful shot though. I it do, was. anytime you make a slow motion merry go round carousel where the backgrounds and the backgrounds moving faster than the front and everybody yeah. it was just it's a beautiful shot. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. My, my favorite was still Paul Paul Blart running in to say uh, <laughs> <laughs> No vampires oh, on the oh. boardwalk. Sorry, Moose outside should have told you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we told you last time. I thought we told you last. I told you. You get out of here now. <laughs> I do the the cool. It's a very cool effect. The guy getting lifted along with his door. Yeah. Like, but it's like this is what we're, I'm going to kind of reiterate on our way through this is that it's like it's just like a black background. There's no like there's no like uh, foreground to like look at or background to look at while especially the attack scenes are going on because it seems like they're just either done in studio and they just had like black background blankets or like what just walls right. put up you know just just for these scenes and that's like a low budget way to do it but i appreciate that a lot um it just seems very very charming to me i have some a- something to add to that okay um with with the charm of it then <laughs> they didn't they they certainly uh lost their budget for that steady cam uh, that for was the first thing they got <laughs> taken that's, out. That's the first thing that got taken out. Uh, and was was that steady cam because all the aerial shots oh are just my like, God. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> Will you hold it steady up He's, there. It's a guy on the wing. He's just on the helicopter. You're talking about when the car is driving along the road. That yeah. is a that is hard to watch. It's hard to watch. <laughs> but again, for some reason, it's absolute charm to me, and I love it. I don't know why. Like. That choppy, like, camera... Because he's that, a vampire flying. That guy is just trying his damnedest to hold on to this camera. He's probably just trying not to drop it, to be honest. <laughs> and and But over that over that choppy water, maybe pun intended, I don't know, that he it's coming in over the uh, the cliffs and, all, yep. and follows the car. And I, for some reason, I like it a lot. And I shouldn't. There's no, no reason. No. That's bad. It's bad, guys. <laughs> I do like the family intro... Uh, of this though, like where it's it's the the bird's eye of their car, and they're just you can hear them talking, and like t- I think they're talking about like the radio, right? Yeah, the, like songs on the radio. Yeah, or something it just like seems that. like yep. a like a the intro to Funny Games. If people out there have seen Funny Games, um, it it seems like that, and it's just like weird. It's it's it, it's like a um a separation of their their like uh voice from their body. I don't know. That there, there's something about it that just seems off to me, but like when we get into the car with the camera, it it goes back to normal. I don't know. D- does that make sense? Sounds like The Shining to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. I think that might be Or it. The Great Outdoors as we've already sure. established that that is the same. Sure. Yeah. They're yeah, all the same creepy movie. about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are. <laughs> Funny games, throw it in there. Same yeah. same rating technically get Great Outdoors. There. I did some research on the whole uh, murder murder capital of the world thing. Yeah. Because I was first, I'm like, this is dumb. Like, of course, it's not the murder capital of the world. But mm. back in the early 70s, Santa Cruz, which is what this town is supposed to be, and that's the town that has the boardwalk. Santa Cruz was an actually nicknamed the murder capital of the world because there were multiple. There were like three, three. serial killers. Did you did you read about that? Yeah. They oh, killed they geez. killed 25 total people in like two and a half years mm-hmm. there. But but that is definitely not enough because I, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and we were always teetering in the top three of, of highest murder rate in the country. Yeah. Uh, so in 1987, Detroit had 648 homicides in 1987. St. Louis closely behind. Uh, but here's the craziest thing. They said uh, murder capital of the world. Uh, the murder rate in Colombia, uh, Med, Med, Medin, Medlin, Medin, the, yeah. Medin, the second largest city, is uh, nine in nine times that of what was in New York City in 1987. This is so, like Pablo Escobar. Yeah, it was well, all it was all political <laughs> unrest and stuff. So how dare you yeah. say that you're the murder capital <laughs> of the world? I'm just bold saying. statement. <laughs> bold statement. So if there, spray if there was a murder belt, yeah, Medin would get that. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, gross. Cool. Speak, uh, speak, speaking of awful things that should probably die, is that shirt that Corey Haim is wearing in the beginning of this? <laughs> Which one? Uh, <laughs> His whole outfit. Exactly. It is oh. rough, dude. Uh, I'm I'm specifically thinking of uh, of the big one, like the ma- it's like he shows up at that at their grandpa's house, and he shows up in a shirt that is about four times too too large for him. <laughs> 
it's it has cr- it it looks like the Save by the Bell opening screen in a t-shirt <laughs> form, dude. It is insane. Like it is too much. You would wear that. No. No. <laughs> Why well, it's not my No. Color. Uh it's, it's just not my size. <laughs> it's not my it's not my size. Um surprisingly. Uh no, it's like <laughs> that is some of the worst and like his attire through this is I I like the contrast between him and his brother. His brother is just yeah, I'm just yeah. a I'm just a gorgeous person. Yes, <laughs> I look like I'm 30, <laughs> and I I just happen to work out the moment I bring in my weights. <laughs> That's th- how I carry my clothes in. And then you have Corey Haim, who is 80s 80s po- poster boy, 100. Yes. percent Yeah, like big pop of hair and stuff like that. He's got pure charisma, just bright colors, big big clothes, like insane dude. Well, is this how you greet your family that I think you know is coming into town? Right, talking about the grandpa. Just laying dead on the it. porch. Is that like how long was he waiting there? There's no cell phones. It's like, hey, we're pulling up. He's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go prank him. Yeah, he's quick. like, he's just, just laying there. How long has he been laying there? There's none of that. <laughs> like, like, they they like had like a maybe a phone call before they left. <laughs> we yeah. maybe in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Just depends on how when we actually get out of the house. <laughs> Even if they, I'll email you. Wait, I can't email you. I'll, I'll call you. Wait, I can't call you. <laughs> payphone? I don't yeah, know. I don't Even know. if they stopped at a payphone. How how far is that away? How yeah. does he know? Like, I, okay, they were at the 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 bait shop payphone when they call me. They have right. at least twenty minutes. I'll go lay down. You're weird, dude. You're strange. You're weird, dude. And then when he, when they show his taxidermy uh, spot or whatever, it's like, yeah, it's menacing when you shine a red scary <laughs> light on it. There's just a red light on everything. You know, if you put blue lights on that, okay, it'd be like angels. Yeah. Okay. It'd be like, oh, it'd have that That's music right. instead of oh, nah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I a lot of times when when we started this podcast, I knew there were certain movies we were going to get to. Yeah, I mean it's it's obvious that even if this had ended a year ago, yes. there are certain movies you know you're going to get to. And I knew we would get to the Lost Boys eventually. And I saved, I saved a meme that because I knew I I needed it. Right, <laughs> I, I, do, I do that too. <laughs> it, it, yes, where you're like I know I'm going to need this for Instagram or exactly. something. But this will be a perfect intro to this scene. There, this meme says no one. Absolutely no one. Literally no one. <laughs> Writers, you know what this movie needs? <laughs> a shirtless, oiled up guy playing saxophone. This, this, like, this is to me the most, the most iconic scene of this movie. Yeah, is Tim Capello. This guy's killing it. The most jacked up dude in history he, with chains around his neck, oiled to a motherfucking perfect blend. Was he Tina Turner's sax guy? I was think that that's w- how he made how he became famous. Right. He was like a touring saxophonist okay, for okay. Tina Turner. Jeez. That dude It sounds like David Bowie. Like I'm serious. No, he like it had to been influenced by him. When you listen to him singing stuff, but he is just he is just thrusting through that. Dude, that that is that is a saxophone player. That's what that is. That is a sex prop, player. Prop or, yep. You want a prop? Yep. Ooh, here's a prop. Damn. That prop is the saxophone. You son you of a bitch. You better believe it. I will, I will, I will yeah. even give up the, the reed. Is that what it's called? For the, the reed? For, for the reed. I'll give that to somebody no, if they want No, you keep it. the whole thing. Okay. You keep the whole thing. Well, I get the saxophone. The one he used in the shoot. 100%. Not, not wiped off. No, yeah. Sweaty, okay. oily, hairy. <laughs> you got one, Edge? Uh, I do, and I don't know why. But for some reason, I really want just Grandpa's refrigerator. <laughs> the, I just I've want a cardboard for... flap that says "old fart." Yeah, <laughs> and like in the contents. Yeah, in the contents, I want whatever's on shelf two. <laughs> I want the root beer and the peanut butter busters and the double stuffed Oreos, whatever he says with, they are. With the old fart sign in front of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. He's got all these like 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 fishing and hunting stickers and like things on magnets. I'm yep. just like, yep, I want that. <laughs> I want uh, the Rob Lowe poster in, no! his, in his bedroom. I want that for the. I'm always thinking about the nice. studio. You guys Why are always thinking I about think yourself. About I'm always thinking about making the studio. <laughs> well, look I was just trying to put a fridge in here. It'd be, it'd go right Come behind on, me. <laughs> no, isn't that that was Rob Lowe in St. Elmo's Fire? Right. I'm not sure if that exact cutout was, but like he Joel Schumacher did because they had just Elmo's done fire. it. Right. Yeah. He had just directed. It. Yeah. That I had to pause and go. Who was that fucking heartthrob on the wall? That's Rob Lowe, hmm, baby. Man, I mean, I, just, I was I was basically just sitting there sipping sipping my beer. I was just like, Ooh, I like her. <laughs> <laughs> the, but back to the saxophone, real quick. The the funny part of, I remember, like when this movie came out, that was probably dope, right? Like people were like, "Fuck yeah, this is awesome!" Like '80s sound, '80s vibe. But then grunge comes along, yeah. Then, 
you know, like whatever pop punk comes along. Like 90s, 2000s, when I saw this movie, I was just like, that's stupid. I would never go to that concert. Why are people listening to this? The world needs more grunge saxophonists. Well, and now it's come back around that 80s sound. Yeah. Are, we are talking about them all the time. The Midnight. All these bands, mm. the 1975, that have these unbelievable saxophone solos in their True. songs. That makes sense. It's it's amazing how this time around, I was like, I'd go to that concert. Yeah, oh, yeah. When you, if you'd asked me ten years ago, I'd be like, I'm, I would never I'd go. go well, I'd especially My Doc go, Martens won't never, make it. No, <laughs> I'd especially go because it's on the beach with fires everywhere and hot, gorgeous women and dudes everywhere. Like that's. I mean, that's, that's my thing. There's no, there's never parties like that. We live in Iowa, smack dab in the middle of this country. There's no nothing like that anywhere. We were out in L.A. and wow. like, you know, the people, in the, the dudes in the Raiders of the Lost podcast didn't even show us where they go. No, come uh, on, guys. Come on, guys. Uh, I also have to say, I, I know I was upset about Sam's shirt and stuff. <laughs> Forget that. Max's jacket. Oh my god. <laughs> is. <laughs> And you know what? His entire wardrobe is beyond, dude. He he looks like he should be like in a synth pop band. He he is the keyboardist for like a real yeah. synth synth pop band. That jacket has straight up shoulder pads in it, it <laughs> <laughs> that he's wearing in that opening comic book scene, dude. It's rough. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you know what the the eighties nerdy vibe. I maybe that's just that's just what it is. Skinny yeah. tie. He was killing it, I killing guess. It, dude. And he had a video store. Hello. <laughs> Did you see what kind of property he bought with just having a, a video store on the boardwalk? Yeah, see, that was prime time, dude. You see European vacation back there. You see the Goonies back yep, there. Yep. You see oh. the, the Texas killing fields in the background. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. So you'd go to Max's store? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. I'd work there. Hopefully I'd work me there. Me and Quentin are going to work there. But, like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna let him. I'm not going to date him, though. Okay? I'm not going to date Max. <laughs> I mean, like, who knows? I, if he's like, hey, I got this uh, first edition or this film print of a yeah. uh, taxi driver back in the back. <laughs> if you, you want to watch it, pants. I'm like, I'll, I'll drink some wine and whatever else is in there to spike it. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I, uh, is that the first place you go for a job? <laughs> if you're uh, new she in town? Wasn't even, she wasn't even there for a job. Like, I think she did. She just walk into the store. You think so? Because she, she gets offered a lollipop first. <laughs> And she's like, no, no. She wants to know. All right. Th- Max wants to know if she sucks before he sucks. That's hey. what he wants. To know. <laughs> Killing it. On fire. Give it to him. Yeah, okay. Give yeah, it to yeah, him. We haven't right. passed the bell yeah. out. It's, we haven't had the bell around for we a while. We haven't had the bell. So, yeah. Well, yeah, all right. <laughs> we, is that it for scene one? Because that um, is a staple. I just well. approve. <laughs> I, just, I just like that it's uh, Edgar and Allen. Yep. That's fun. Edgar Allan Poe. Never thought um, about that until this the, watch. And may, maybe the most blatant piece of foreshadowing vampires everywhere. The <laughs> yeah. comic. Which he, he made that comic up. That is yeah. A, that is a made-up comic book. Oh, okay. That then they then printed as prop as like things you could buy for this movie right mm-hmm. but apparently the original store owner the guy that actually owned that store has copy number it. one yeah and he lets you just come up and hold it and take yeah. a photo with it that's so dope it's so cool yeah he probably didn't charge the, uh, the production anything to even film there no. well before we move on to scene two super special shout out we finally after two years have a website what? I was super nervous because I didn't know where to turn. Like, that's kind of a daunting thing to say, build me a website. But luckily, we found Driving Cap Digital, and I'm so glad we did. Every business, small or large, needs to get noticed now more than ever. Across the country and across the planet, websites need to shine and react fast to anyone searching for them. It's also important to look great on any device that finds them, from the newest phones or tablets to every kind of computer. Driving Cap Digital is a full-service web design and digital marketing company with a team of professional designers and marketers that can give your business the ability to reach more people and have more opportunities. From start to finish, they help to drive more traffic to you. Driving Cap specializes in helping small business owners and entrepreneurs get the most bang for their buck. Their custom-made websites are easy to update using the most popular content management system, WordPress. With a short tutorial, they can also show you how to navigate the back end of your site, make changes on your own so you don't have to keep paying for it long term. They create websites that look modern, fresh, and professional and develop marketing goals that perfectly suit your business. Driving Cap also offers services such as social media and email marketing, search engine optimization and analytics for your site, even copywriting and consulting for your business. 
honestly, the process from start to finish was completely seamless. And now we finally have an incredible new website that people can go to. You go to confusedbreakfast.com. You can look at all of our ratings. You can click on our photos, get all of our episodes. Uh, you go to that, and then you also got to go to drivingcapdigital.com to see their work, get started. We got a link in the show notes for them. Thanks again, Driving Cap Digital. Their slogan, driving business, driving passion, driving cap. Driving Honestly, cap. it's very, very nice. Um, Some would say slick. It's very slick. I I, so. We don't go to websites on our on our laptops or anything anymore. We oh, go to them. On, we go to them on our phones, do. and That's it right. looks it looks and feels very nice, yep. very accessible. And it, I'm uh, I'm very excited about it and proud of it. Yeah, cool. Hundred well, percent. Well, scene two, Michael becomes enthralled by the mysterious and beautiful woman named Star, who happens to be the girlfriend of David. David and his gang take Michael to their hideout, which is the remnants of an old hotel that collapsed during an earthquake. While there, Michael inadvertently drinks David's blood, thinking it is wine. They then go to the train bridge for a mysterious end to the evening. Oh, okay. Okay, I, no, I get it. What? So this movie is Point Break. This movie's Point Break and Fast and the Furious. <laughs> this movie's Point Break, yes. right? <laughs> uh, well, you kind of. Well, what do you... Okay, go ahead. You... Fight me. No, uh, no I, don't, like, I mean, we're not, there's no mo- undercover cop. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> motivation is pure sex right off the bat, yes. not, not job. Related. Yeah, that's right. There's yeah. no, there's no, the motivations are different, but yeah. you meet the guy, you meet the guy, the mysterious dude yeah. who has the clan around him, this cult, you could say, that does things for him. And then there's the girl who is sort of involved yeah. in that clan slash cult. It's, it's that. Listen, I. I don't I don't talk about this very often because it was a tough time in my life when I when was you were in a cult in eighth grade I moved from St Louis Missouri to Cedar Rapids Iowa and yeah. had to make friends mm. felt like Michael here just a little younger than Michael my name's Michael weird Michael anyway if I had if I had done this and I had gone to Cedar Rapids Iowa and there was like just the girl just blew me away and I was like I gotta I gotta know this girl mm. and then I saw that that she was involved with them. I would have immediately been like, well, that sucks. Too bad. <laughs> and I would have been like, I'll find somebody else. I would have yeah. never. Star, Star's throwing up so many red flags <laughs> from, from the start. And Michael's like, I don't give a shit. Ugh. And then he's see, and then he's going through the motorcycle ride and all this stuff. And he's still like, no, nah, I think these guys are pretty cool. Like, I think yeah. I, I think I can I think I can hang out with these. Dudes. But even like it, he's not even thinking they're pretty cool. He might be thinking that. But then like they they get to the where he's. Almost shoving him off the cliff. Yes. Or like uh, guiding him off the cliff and then just straight up punches him in the face and just like, ah, that's cool. Yeah. Is this a Johnny Lawrence, Daniel LaRusso scene where like uh, Michael's showing up onto David's turf? Right. And David's just got a girlfriend here and he's trying to defend himself. Dude came up and punched him. Yeah. Of course he's going to fuck with him. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, dude comes up and punched him. He's like, how far are you willing to go, Michael? He's like, I don't know. I guess until I win. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, are we fighting? So I don't know. One of us dies. Yeah. If What's that was the answer, if that was a play on words to see if I'd go over the cliff, then no, I'm not <laughs> willing to go that far. I guess. But if it's just me and you fighting, then I I'd go that far. I so. mean, let's let's break it down. Jim Morrison versus Billy Idol. That's basically what it is. It's basically <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Kinda. I like that. <laughs> hey. If if we are talking shit about this soundtrack, though, there is only one good song. And in my opinion, it is Lou Graham's Lost in the Shadows. It's the motorcycle. It's when they leave the board rock on their motorcycles and they're on the beach. Is that not the singer from Lost Foreigner? Lost in the Shadows. Oh, Lou, yeah. uh, Lou Graham? I don't know. It, he sounds like he's or like De- Def Leppard. No, it's not Def Leppard. This, this is a great scene, uh, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it is it is a, a lot of fun. You know, and, and when he finally, he's like, you know, how did he know his name, actually? I don't remember them anybody saying his name to the to those guys first now maybe i'm wrong maybe i've got that off but he's just for me it's 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 come on michael you don't have to beat my my, my bike michael like, how do you know my name how the fuck do you know who i am <laughs> Plus, again red flags like red flags can you say that again Are, we have 12 <laughs> engines going <on>. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Graham is the singer for Foreigner Foreigner, foreigner. okay there you go. Yeah. which Hell, just proves yeah. why it's good cuz honestly foreigner is yes. great yeah uh, and he's he's just trying to keep up on his like dirt bike, I guess, looking for you know uh, accessible ramps uh, instead of <laughs> stairs. Um, but it is a really fun scene. It is very intense. It's very scary, and he just keeps going with this though. Oh yeah, you almost tried to run me off a cliff, and uh, 
But uh, uh, but if there's still a chance, I could bang. Well, well, <laughs> see, I I was gonna quit, but did you see she kept looking back at me on her She on kept the bike? looking back. I gotta keep going. <laughs> She's in trouble. Going. Let's just go down in their in their lair well, and see if things get better. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens, it's and we'll pretty, go down in their lair. You know, we're pretty old. <laughs> it's we're, it, we are older <laughs> people, and they still they have a treehouse essentially. <laughs> pretty dope. High I though. don't know. You mean to tell me that like it goes from? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know I know your name, and I don't know you don't know why I know your name. Let's do a motorcycle race to the edge of a cliff and play chicken. Follow me down into uh, into this layer. It's yeah. a f- it's, it's a, a layer. layer. Yeah. That's that's def- definition of a layer. And then from there, you know what? Uh, after some Chinese food, we'll just go <laughs> hang off a bridge. It's like I don't know about you guys, but after eating some Chinese food, I couldn't do <laughs> shit. Okay, I'd <laughs> like, float away like uh, Paul Blart in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, as a kid, I used to always think so. He takes he takes a, a smoke of that joint, right? Like he hands him a joint. Oh, yeah. hands him a Fucking joint. Four twenty, dude. He takes, Fuck one, he takes one puff of this, which we're assuming he's smoked marijuana before yeah. many times. I mean, look at him. <laughs> Come on, <now. laughs> jeez. Uh, but then, Leather then, jacket, then, long hair. then I thought as a kid that that was how he and his brain was pretending like the maggots and the worms. Like how, that's how he was justifying his brain, but oh. no, that has never happened to me on weed. Where I've been like, "Oh no, this is maggots." Oh no, it's not. Oh, what the hell? Like at that point again, this guy knows magic or something, and is and is doing this to you, and you're still like, "No, I, I'm st- I'll still drink from this chalice of wine. I'm sure it'll be fine." Maybe it's the Santa Cruz uh, or Santa Clara Car- Carlita Car- Carla Carla Clara? Santa Carla, yeah. We know we saw we watched this movie. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, <laughs> California. Um, maybe it's that wa- that weed, that strain, dude. Maybe it's like that a different strain. strain. He's like, I- I've smoked weed before, but it was probably ditch weed. Yeah, dude. You know, wherever <laughs> the hell where they, they came, came from, from, Phoenix or Phoenix. Did yep. they come from Phoenix? Definitely yeah. dry. It's got to be dry Mr. weed, Phoenix. Um, so maybe maybe it was just kind of like he he was thinking it was a different kind of strain. He's like, oh, I might be seeing shit. That's kind of fun. <laughs> we talked about it in the Fast Times episode where you know you're. You're searching for a girl, but then, like, at some point, you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to leave. Like, that, I, yeah. there's been so many chances Michael could have just been like, you know what? Uh, we just moved here. I'm kind of tired. My mo- I got to go help my mom move. I'll, yeah. I'll call you. Let me get your number. But yeah. he's just like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. Let's go to the train bridge and see Let's what happens. Let's go to the train bridge. Let's drink weird things from dusty bottles and then go to a train bridge. That sounds dope. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Dude, no thank you. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Did you see whether they tried to do this or not? Uh, it's it's the jury's still out. If this would have yeah. been certain people, I think we could have said this was in uh, it happened on on purpose. But two different times, the scenes foreshadow the order in which the Lost Boys die. One oh. was the merry-go-round. As they enter in the first scene, it goes Marco, Paul, Dwayne, David. The same order that they jump off the train bridge. Marco, Paul, Dwayne. David mm. oh. is the order that they're killed at the end of the movie. So I think there's there's like literally a lot of thought put into this. Obviously, be, uh, from Joel Schumacher himself, um, the director of Batman and Robin. Believe it or not, <laughs> uh, I think he is, does a great job in this movie. Like a really underrated kind of job, to be honest. Uh, with his whole cast, his whole team that he has, I think he really pulls something kind of special off. And to add these details, I think it's honestly with the with the with like w- he's probably I'm thinking he's got less of the studio involvement now because they cut the budget. He's probably thinking like they don't care as much anymore. They think they're just going to let us make our movie, you know, mm. and I think that he's got kind of that freedom in his head and to like kind of put these foreshadowing moments in here or these kind of uh, underlaying underlays in yeah. this movie and i think that's i think that's what's going on i think it really shows and I, I i think that's purposeful yeah for sure cool anyway i don't know and i don't know what happened when he fell off the bridge but i do know that they they like someone carried him on their motorcycle probably and like put him into his bedroom are we assuming that <sighs> like how did michael actually get home see that was that was like one issue i kind of had <laughs> is i'm just like okay so he fell and but then it's just what there's just nothing it's just it's just oh did nice you dream little, the whole uh, sequence nice dissolve nice dissolve <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, 
<laughs> that's it. Like, yeah, I don't know. I guess that's what you get. That's that's how they're going to transition this without well, any explanation. That takes us to scene three. Michael starts to develop some side effects, including sensitivity to sounds, a lack of reflection, and even flying. At one point, Michael almost attacks Sam, but is stopped by the family dog named Nanook. Sam is frightened and calls their mom, who is having dinner with Max. Michael manages to calm Sam down before mom gets home. Needless to say, Lucy is upset at having her evening ruined. Ruined. After these events, Michael returns to David's hideout where he confronts Star. One thing I did leave out, my apologies, is that maybe yet another connection to um, David being uh, the Stand By Me uh, connection. Yeah. Mm. Bully. Uh, is the train. Like Ooh. Maybe he was dodging trains in Stand By Me. We didn't ever see him do that. That's true. So maybe that's why they went to this train. Is that It was just kind of in his mind to make... It was just something that to he, have people test out, and it's just the '80s version of dodge, a uh, uh, train dodging, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's way cooler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Just something I was thinking about when yeah. I was watching it. No, I like that because yeah. I I watched this movie with that fan theory in mind because I believe in it wholeheartedly. Yeah, I do. I I love it so much that I just it's just kind of in my brain as canon with the with those two movies relating. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I watched it. If you don't know that, go back to our Stand By Me episode. We had a really cool uh, connection of making Ace from Stand By Me to David in Lost Boys. Yeah. Won't go into it today, but yeah, yeah, check yeah. it out. Uh, I've, I, I love all of Michael's um, side Michael. effects. Michael, be one of us, Michael. Come join us, Michael. What are you <laughs> eating there, Michael? Four, 118 times. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty do. sure I know that you're talking to me now. <laughs> <laughs> no one else here. I'm looking directly at you. Do you have to say your name? Like people call me Mike. It's okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's another way to say that he is old, like super old fashioned. Sure. Is that it's Very the formal, formal name? Formal oh, name. Yeah. There you go. See, uh, I love grasping at straws. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just he, kidding. I love how he's like he's. He's like uh, when he's like flying and stuff. He's just running into the ceiling and stuff. For some reason, this scene is actually very funny to me. I'm just like, cue up, <laughs> cue up gravity by John Mayer. Like <laughs> gravity, <laughs> working it's like, against me. Against me. Ah. I just want that scene. It's just like gravity. <laughs> it's like no. Make it so TikTok. <laughs> yeah, make it so. Thank you. Uh, but like that kind of stuff, and and then like you you've got uh, he's like the, I love how when he calls the Frog Brothers, which we haven't talked about the Frog yes, Brothers much uh, at this point, and um, like when he does call like the Frog Brothers, and uh, they're just like I feel like they're just like naming random things. And it's just like does your brother sleep all day. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like is he is he uh, does he not like the lights? Like well, yeah, he's wearing sunglasses all the time. It's Ooh. like. Does he have bad breath? It's like, well, he's always kind of had bad breath. Is his fingernails long? It's like, oh, yeah, they're definitely long. It's like, did he wear the jeans the same as yesterday? It's just like, <laughs> did he forget to flush the toilet? He's yeah! He's definitely Jim Morrison. <laughs> it's like, you're going to have to kill your brother. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> for being like a normal teenager. <laughs> yeah, <just> exactly. Like, <laughs> It's very true. Is he going to leave milk jugs out Yeah. while he's sleeping? Yeah. Does he have milk jugs full of piss? <laughs> Does he tr- does he work out? <laughs> yes. Yeah, he does. He's got his own barbell set. Did he recently buy a leather jacket? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> does he have a dirt bike? From oh. the s- <laughs> he's a vamp, all right. Why do they Why do they treat Corey Hames' car- Sam like he's nine years old? Yeah, I know. Like, take go take a bath, and he's open to taking the bath and and singing the song and stuff. It's just like a. close it, close the closet. <laughs> like when when he goes to bed, they close the closet for him. I. I almost maybe punchable face. Who is that? Right, C- uh, Sam. It's Corey Aim. Yeah. Are you call? Are you calling it? Oh, you be bold. He's my punchable face. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm that's, about. that's. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. That's very surprising because I honestly have this note that I think Corey Haim is the best part of this movie. Okay. I was just thinking as the intro <laughs> thing was going, I'm like, he actually has <laughs> maybe the biggest arc. Yes. <laughs> of he, any character. He just like, he, I don't know. I never used to like, Cor- I was a Corey Feldman guy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I never really used to like Corey Haim. And like, so I if you wanted one to die before the other, it'd be Corey that's, Haim. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know. As a child, not anymore. 
Oh, that was harsh, Sean. I'm sorry. Zinger. Zinger. But this I think big zing. funny. Yeah. I, Satire. Like, I love Satire. I love him in the bathtub. I love him like I just love when he's under the cover. He's like, ah he's like I just think he's the most interesting character of this movie. And and I don't want to punch his face. Maybe as a kid I would have agreed with you. But. I, f- I feel just like in this scene, I'm just I, I was getting really mad. Just because like, he's how old? He's gotta be yes. 16, 17? Yeah, somewhere well, in there. Well, no, because... Well, that's actually David, or Michael, Yeah, they're, 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 we're assuming Michael's going to be like a senior in yeah. high school or something like that, so that means he's probably like seventh grade, but yeah. again, that still seems, that doesn't seem right for the way he's getting treated in yeah. this movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can watch the house by himself at this He'll point. be fine. Yeah. And taking a bath? <laughs> I'm with you. So who is, who is well, the most punchable face then? Well, uh, well, I can tell you mine, if, you're, if you want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. I have headphones on. I have to hear it. <laughs> Good point. Uh, it's it's yeah. Max when he's a vampire. I'm in. Boom. <laughs> I'm in on Max in general. Yeah, in I don't general, like Max's think, face right? at all. I'll, I don't like, like his character. Normally, I'm him. I follow the rule: you don't punch a dude with glasses. Fuck that! I'm breaking him. Yeah, right in the right in the nose, dude. That that bridge is getting busted. He's the weirdest. He's the weirdest character in this movie. Like he's yeah. just very awkward and everything, and I don't yeah. like the way he looks. No, and. Like uh, Corey Haim, <clears throat> to me is is just like it, it's. There's a point where I feel like there are times when he is acting, and there's times when I I'm like I believe him as this character, but like when he's interacting with the with the Frog Brothers, it's very much like he's just like, you know, like you can't put the Superman next to, like this one, the ninety three is next to the three hundreds, and it's just like, oh great, I uh, guess I'll never call you. Like he's. <laughs> <laughs> He's performing while acting, right? Like, yeah. I think we've talked about acting while acting or something. That's what he's doing in some of those situations. But then you have these moments between um, him and what's what's his older brother's the Michael. older Michael that those two actors interacting even even in like the background, like when they're walking behind Grandpa when he's giving the rules, <laughs> and they're like Michael's messing with Sam and he's yeah. like tickling his ear and stuff, and he's like. Like trying to pay attention, but they're, they're like really w- interacting very, I very know. well, and I really like their performances in this a lot. Yeah, I think so. there's some good stuff from uh, from Sam from Corey Haim when they do the dinner, and Max mm. and Max is there, and that's really a cool, enjoyed this scene. Yeah, yeah, and that's a cool thing because they they mess with you the first time you watch this movie because they think Max is the head vampire. But then none of this works. And, and as a viewer, you believe it. You're like, well, then it's not the head vamp. We're, we're with them. We're going, well, he's not it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It is a really cool, because if, you've even, if you even see it coming, which I don't, like, I mean, after even seeing the movie for a while, I'm like, I, I'm just kind of going along with the story and kind of tuning out that I've ever seen it before, you know. Um, even when they do do this, like, you got to believe, like, seeing it for the first time is just like, yeah, I, I was kind of seeing this coming. So maybe like, is this like the end of the? We're getting to the end of the is movie, this it? and none of the tests work. And so you're like, okay, it must be something else. It must be David, because we we know David. Yeah, you know. And the way they they set it up, where David, it, that that was another thing. David like is like tor- tormenting Max in his shop. Yeah, which right. is weird. If you now that you know the end of the story, that doesn't really make sense to me, does it? You know, I mean, just like a dad. Yeah, okay. You know, like a father figure just like, oh, fuck fuck your yeah. fuck your European vacation VHS. <laughs> yeah. There is something this about that probably Re- like Pecan rewind. Probably as we get into either scene 4 or maybe f- might be 5 actually. Um that I have I have some thoughts on that okay. about how they end up doing that and everything. I guess people are going to have to keep listening. I don't know. <laughs> Only if they want to. Yes. <laughs> I will say we just won't force you. one little one little damn picky little picky thing there's an adr from sam that i didn't like when um when michael comes in the house uh he looks at sam at at, he's like eating um a cereal or something like that and uh knows that uh michael has been out and looks back at him but in between the shot of sam at the table it cuts to michael again and uh sam says did you take care of everything michael because he goes to the layer yeah 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 um is clearly adr and i think it would have been a better thing if it it would just left it out there like the the look i bought yeah like that that's what he was saying in the look exactly and i I really wish they would have just kept that it was probably like an editing thing he's like i think we need that it seems like a producer's note what if you say did you take care of everything that makes mom be like take care of what yeah (laughs) like you don't have to say that the look was great and i it 
just looked like it was completely added in later. But anyway. One last thing on this scene. Uh, it's really weird to me that like it just shows the power of a, of a teenage mind and a hot guy and a hot girl. Like he goes to the cave to confront Star and he's like, what? Like, seriously, what is happening to me? This is the weirdest thing. And she's like, I'm not going to tell you, but here's sex. <laughs> and he's like, okay, that's good enough. We're both right. frustrated. <laughs> I can't tell you we're frustrated. Turns out it's sexual frustration. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, uh, David wanted you to be my first. It's like, well, we got a different first out of the way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, right. bro. Sweet. Right. <laughs> Fucking on top and stuff. Right? Well, Missionary and stuff. At this moment in time, though, while, while the sex happens, we were assuming multiple sexes. Because he's there, he's there for a long time. They fall asleep, right? Cool. He, yeah, he comes immediately, and they're like, well, "We'll wait for a little bit, and then we'll and try." The, and like, then usually the second time's a little yeah, better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, where was, the, where was Laddie during this whole scene? <laughs> <laughs> Laddie's not leaving the lair. Why is Laddie in this movie? <laughs> That's what I said. What <laughs> Why? Is the point? What is Why? the point of this stupid little kid vampire being in the movie? It's some weird like leprechaun willow crossover. I don't know if <laughs> Near Dark was made before this or after, but it's like that little kid in Near Dark. It like you know what I finally realized it reminded me of it was that was the troll in Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> was just like eventually, you know, it's like, like sort of scary at first, but not really. Like, why is he wearing a symbol monkey jacket? Like what the <laughs> hell is going on? Like when they know. first pulled up when. When uh, Michael is hitting on Star, <laughs> they first pull up and he's got the kid on, in the back. The blonde, the long yeah, yeah. blonde haired vampire has yeah. the kid in the back. I'm like, that's a big backpack. Oh, that's a child. <laughs> that's, oh, oh, a pointless <laughs> child. Yeah, yeah, cool. Why awesome. is he there? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, scene four. The next day, Sam accompanies his mom to Max's place to drop off some wine. However, they are both terrified when Max's dog Thorn attempts to attack Lucy. Sam tells the Frog Brothers, confident that Michael is only a half vampire and that he can be saved if the head vampire is killed, they believe it to be Max. Lucy invites Max over to dinner a few days later. Sam has brought the Frog Brothers over for dinner. They attempt to expose him. However, none of their plans work and they conclude that Max is not the head vampire. Oh, okay. I, so um, this was the first film that Corey Haim and Corey Feldman were in together. Remember they they had both auditioned for like um, Goonies or something like that. And right, they met, right. They met each other then, but this was the first they were in. So this movie started the popular '80s trend of the two Corys, okay. which was Corey Feldman, Corey Haim. They starred in a number of teenage films moving forward. Um, the other Frog brother, his name is Jameson Newlander, and I like to picture how this went. Like this movie came out, and they're <laughs> like, they're like, it's the two Corys, and he's like. And Jameson, and right? Jameson, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, remember we were we were together in the movie. The Frog Brothers, Corey, yeah. yeah. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> like, that's got to suck to know that you're just really not that good of an actor, <laughs> and that that the two guys are just gonna move along without you moving forward. You're, you, that guy is basically Paul from the Wonder Years. Like, you <laughs> yeah. just you don't give a shit, right? Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Marilyn Manson you're right, <laughs> and you're just like. Okay, well, it's like, oh yeah, the Corys are here, you know. That if you remember from uh, Lost Boys, and Jameson, it's like, it's like, the it's like yeah, Frog Brothers. It's like no, 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 like, no. That we didn't like that movie. We don't care about the Frog Brothers. We care about the Corys. Like, damn, to have one duo overlooked for just a, a name yeah. is pretty rough. It's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> shit. Yeah, we talked about like the dinner scene. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I, 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 there was. The, the original script in this, um, Joel Schumacher wanted like a more, obviously, uh, c- more m- comedy tinge to it. He just, he felt like he would wanted to mix the horror with, with the comedy uh, or vice versa. And so he brought on that writer, the uh, Jeffrey Boehm, uh, to kind of touch it up and added more of these scenes, like these comedic bits to it. Ooh. And it's a very like, it's a very, um, din- like, com- Com- comedic dinner scene like you would see this in a comedy movie you know yeah um or like it almost reminded me of uh, what we do in the shadows a little bit okay yeah. Taika Waititi, <laughs> that, yeah. that kind of thing um yeah i, I like it uh, what do you guys think of the comedy tinge well, is, to this movie is, is this comedy is this movie a comedy i wouldn't say i think it has comedy tinges to it a uh, lot of a lot of uh reviews that i read called it a horror comedy they would they referred to it like the '80s reviewers referred to it as a horror comedy. Wow! But I don't necessarily think it was defined as such. I think as long as horror is first. I mean, because this is this is a horror movie, but you throw a couple the Corys in it. That's kind of funny. Yeah. 
you throw that that dinner scene particularly feels a little out of place mm-hmm. because it is sort of like, <laughs> well, it's garlic. Yeah, you thought it was gonna explode, but I I actually do like garlic, but it's yeah. a lot. They sh- they put the mirror in front of his face and then flip the lights on. It, all that was missing was the. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, wor- it works, but yeah. it's also it fe- if you want to analyze it, it does feel a little out of place. Yeah, l- l- yeah, it it's definitely like it's on its own for sure. Yeah, it's it's, def- it's its own sequence, I I guess. But uh, yeah, comedy comedy horror would I guess be more like what we do in the shadows. Like it's a comedy okay, first, sure, yeah. with horror. Shaun of the tropes. Dead. Shaun of the Dead is definitely comedy horror. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, this is I think horror comedy. If anything, I just I think it's horror eighties. <laughs> because it's, <laughs> it's just it's just more eighties than anything. And like um, maybe at in at the time. They thought they were making like a horror comedy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, right. And I get that, but it just seems to me like that's the '80s had this charm and this this signature charm, and this is kind of latent with it to me. The saxophone guy was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. (laughs) It's it's '80s and ridiculous. Was it funny or was it '80s? It's the thing. Same thing, bro. (laughs) There's a shirt. Was it funny or was it '80s? (laughs) That's a good one. Cool. (laughs) I'm. I would wear that shirt. Okay. Um. Is this is are is this about the time where like they go on the hunt, like they hunt the surf Nazis That's and it. stuff? Then at this point, um, yeah, I think let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and say that that is happening right now, probably yeah. around this time. Yeah. Because I just like they take Michael out for like his first Michael. his first kill. Michael, join us, Michael. Come on, Michael. Are you ready to join us, Michael? And I feel like it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And they're in the tree just hanging out and stuff and. When they turn, it's pretty terrifying. Like I personally find it very terrifying. Like, and uh, Alex Winter is probably one of the most terrifying yeah. out of the four. To be completely honest, you know the the brunette guy. He still looks hot. He's just hot. Yeah, 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 now. Yeah, it's dude. fine. They're like all models except for basically uh, Kiefer Sullivan and Mike or uh, Alex Winter. Yeah, I mean, and even then, I'd still say like you know. Kiefer Sutherland kind of is. Yeah. But at this at the same time. Sorry, Alex Winter. No. Uh, Alex, wait, wait, don't tell me. Alex he's a good looking dude. He, he is, is. He's got that. He has the confidence. Like, right. When he when he, when they all kind of walk in yeah. to the store, everybody's just looking cool. But he just has this sly grin. He's like, mm. I know. I'm and Alex Winter. I'm Alex Winter. And soon to be in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah. The the thing about that's so creepy about him is his laugh, like when they're like doing the the face reveal, like the vampire turn reveal, and he's like, <laughs> "It's like you should not have that voice as yeah. that face. Yeah. That is terrifying, True. very very terrifying." Well, I I mean it was because we did Bill and Ted. I'm I'm just thinking like all of them do the reveal and he's like last, like they're all like ah ah ah, and he's just like I <laughs> did. <Dude."> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's go kill some surf Nazis. Yeah, now. let's get those fuckers. <laughs> Are we happy that they're gonna kill surf Nazis? Like surf Nazis sounds like a really they bad, sound like they're bad people. It sounds like a bad thing, right? Yeah, and it sounds like more of like a, a war child group, anyway. So yeah. I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, like if you if you tag anything on top, like in front of Nazi, I don't think it's even yeah. like like smile Nazis. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. I don't think you can still define bad. them as a good group. They're still. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> still like joy, they're still bigots to some joy degree. Nazis. <laughs> like joy Nazis. Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> usually, when you say something like when you're like you're a joy Nazi, is does that usually mean uh, you're against joy? So oh. they're against so surfing. they're against surfing. So we don't like these <laughs> this guys. So we no still surfing. don't like them. <laughs> This yeah. makes no sense. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Anything Nazi is just not good. This is what people come to the Confused Breakfast for. <laughs> yeah, the, the, like, you know, a lot of people are talking about camera work and angles. <laughs> We're like, they named that wrong. Yeah, that was the wrong name. <laughs> They're surf Nazis. They clearly love surfing. They clearly love it. Like, <laughs> Nazis who surf would have been a better name. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Bodie and his crew down there just getting smoked by. I would have loved that crossover <laughs> if they would have put like War Child and, and like all those fuckers. Wait, I don't Feather know. Bonnet, Feather Bonnet. <laughs> Hang on, Dan. So and are the Frog Brothers vampire Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Now uh-huh. I hate this. <laughs> no, 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 I don't like this segment. <laughs> They're against it. They're against vampires. All right, that makes that makes perfect sense. So, like yeah. staunchly so. Like yeah. they want to exterminate <gasps> them. Okay, yeah. then that's fine. I'm the, gonna allow it. When they when they go in on these surf Nazis, better for us, whatever it is, they're like, it's not like neck bites. These dudes are like decapitating people. They're like 
scalping them. Yeah, so we get kind of the cool gore. They like bite into him and blood pours out. Yeah, and you're just like throwing them on the fire and shit too. Yeah, it's like burning, like cooking them. They don't want. Do they want? I could eat this thing. I just want the blood. Yeah, exactly. That's not what you want. I'll get a burger at the boardwalk later. Like I just need blood. Do they have their own lingo in this situation? It's just. Totally gave that guy serious head last night, bro. Fucking ate his head so hulking yeah, hard. Yeah, man, dude. It's like, dude, I peeled the skin right back, and I just st- just sucked out of that head, sucked bro. so hard. <laughs> that <was> so good. <laughs> just I, start, I just started I saw you. I was sucking, looking dude. Over. I was looking over at you, and you were fucking sucking, and dude. I was like fucking sucking. Dude, that was so good, man. We were, we were sucking together. We, I don't know how we were doing it, but you, we were sucking for both sides, bro. <laughs> Some, 60 <laughs> sometimes, 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 I don't know if you like... <laughs> I don't know if you think about it too, but like I see, we catch yeah. each other's eye, and we're like we're we're sucking while looking at each other's eyes. Dude, I really a feel moment. a deep connection with that you. I kind of almost want to suck you, yeah. not not in any, you know, like a friend way though. Like an we're Eiffel friends. Tower, an Eiffel Tower. If you're both sucking out of the same person, <laughs> and looking at each other, I'm so confused. Dude, that blood is circulating through both of us, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so what one quick question before we hit the final scene. Um are we to to believe that f- the Frog Brothers run this comic store or is that old hippie couple that they show three times sleeping is that their parents that own this comic book store? I feel like it's their parents. Well, you, you know what I'm talking about? There's yeah, like yeah, yeah. they they just do these random cuts to these hippies that are just sitting against the wall. Yeah. They are credited and they and so they must be real people. What? And so they're credited as the frog parents. That just makes mm. no like sense. frog frog mom, frog dad is basically <laughs> how they're credited. Ribbit. I did hear bad. Ribbiting. Yeah. Uh it's like I don't know if if that's <laughs> but but like you say, they might as well have just been not even there. They do mention that they work at the like p- their parents' comic book store. Yeah, like, this that's is what they, they should have just been guys that hang out at a comic book store. Right. Like it's just <laughs> this is a front. Yeah. <laughs> true justice in the American, American way. way. Sometimes when he's like trying to do his deep voice, Dude. it bothers me. <laughs> I love it sounds Corey like Feldman a frog. So much. I, I like I know the reason I buy into Corey Feldman's performance in this is because of how like later on those types of things happen, or, or, or he's. He says, like when he says, um, he's like, oh, you can't invite, he's like, you'd never invite some a vampire into your house. He's like, wait, did you know that? He's like, of course I knew that. <laughs> Everybody knew that. <laughs> you know, that. You know, like, it's almost like he's making up as he goes, but it's it's a performance, and a performance, again, is what it feels like to me. And if yeah. it's not, then that's not great. But yep. that's the way it felt to me. So, Well, last scene, lots to get to here. Michael goes to the hideout to remove Laddie and Star while Sam and the Frog Brothers kill one of the vampires. Knowing that there will be a retaliation, they prepare the house for battle. Night falls, and they are attacked by David and the other vampires. All are killed, but nothing goes back to normal. Lucy and Max arrive, and Max is revealed to be the head vampire. Grandpa shows up to save the day and kills Max. Speaking of the Frog Brothers, I love how excited they are to kill fucking vampires. Dude. Pretty awesome. They are hyped. This is this is the one scene that, when I was a kid, really freaked me out because the tension in this I thought was a lot when I was watching it as a kid I thought was huge but then this is like a very short scene when I rewatched it for this you know what I mean they go they go into the lair and I thought it was like kind of more of a like a long drawn out like they had to be more quiet but they're yelling their whole way through there <laughs> they really they are, are like screaming their asses off and like dropping shit they're just, yeah you're right they're just they're just fumbling their way through it like oh yeah like they're, how do you loudly climb down a ladder? Like, <laughs> like, come on, man! Like, you just—they're just going through the whole place, and I don't know. They, I love, but they are—they're super stoked to just like. They're like, "Hey, I found a, I found a per, a person might be a vampire. Let's kill it anyways." Star, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, I mean, they get to uh, Laddie. 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 Laddie is the name of the name is Laddie. That? It's pretty bad. Um, I go ahead and kill him. You know, I, I, <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, can I talk about Laddie for another like yes. two seconds here? What's the point of turning a nine year old kid into a vampire? Oh, uh, to get the to get that puss, bro. <laughs> Wait, what? You, she's it's her it's her brother. <laughs> oh so no, she's, no, no, she's no, no, not, no, no, it's not. No, it's there not. It's no, not her brother. There's no relation between Star and Laddie. 
Why did I think it was her brother? Did you think uh, that? No. Because that's the logical explanation. You're right. It is not. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> but by the way, brain. vampires live forever forever at the at the age that they're turned. Yes. So you mean to tell me you're going to lock yourself into living with a nine-year-old for fucking how, <laughs> for the rest of what? eternity? Are you serious? What are you doing? Are you serious right now? You want to deal with that? There's the terrible twos, and then they call them the Nazi nines. The that's Nazi what I hear. nines is what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> the surf Nazi nines. Yeah. And, uh, uh, like, you're going to lock yourself yourself in for this i don't think so bro it doesn't make any sense why you're just like turning a kid into into a vampire well it's just like uh, i don't know what his a vampire name is but um uh alex winter uh marco marco Marco. with a k you know what with a k i have i've done a lot (laughs) i've done a lot you know i've had a pretty good life i've lived for maybe 127 years um the thing i haven't done i really want to be a dad (laughs) I really want to. Really want to be a dad. I think can can we can you guys like help me on along with, along with my jury journey and everything and yeah your bogus journey my bogus journey okay. yes yes the the dark haired guy always is the one with with laddie on the back of the motorcycle so maybe that maybe he was <laughs> like maybe that was his thing yeah, yeah. I, was, I always really want to be a dad that's what I'm saying dude look in each other's eyes and suck suck away <laughs> <laughs> well and and like who's gonna who's gonna do it who's gonna turn the kid. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, uh, and wait, how do you hold on? Wait, wait, wait. How do you turn? Th- see this? Okay, I'm not. I am not a vampire movie fan. Like, I got like, you. Okay, like like the what was the fucking Twilight? All that shit. No thanks. It's not, not for me. Too, bro. Okay, yeah, dog. the real. We're talking real vampires. Yeah, yeah. What what this movie doesn't explain anything at all, barely. No. So like what? So they're they're just killing these surf Nazis to just to just drink blood, right? Yeah. Because they need to have blood. To survive, yeah. they need to feed. Um, but then, like, how do you? How are you turning someone into a Nazi? Are you normally you think into that's biting? Or, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that you're born into that. Yeah. Nazis uh, bite each other. That's how they turn them into <laughs> blue, horrible, blue-eyed, blonde-haired. Horrible <laughs> rhetoric. <laughs> you're, you're uh, like the way I picture it in my head is you, you, you bite like Dracula. You yeah. bite someone, and that does that turn them into a vampire? I think maybe like what <laughs> my thought is is that you completely drain them and they're dead. You know, and if you just bite them, if you just prick them with your teeth, then you kind of turn. And so I think there's like maybe a conscious effort to just bite or to suck, you know. So so bite. So biting doesn't turn, but sucking does or vice versa. Vice versa. So I can suck without biting. Well, you no, because or bite. I can bite without. If you get if you get bit, you are automatically on your way to becoming a vampire. But if you drain completely, obviously you die. When you bite, when a vampire bites, does it suck in through their fangs? <laughs> that's like what I've re- like wondered. that's what I thought. <laughs> or as a or kid. do they just ah. <laughs> <laughs> like? Is it that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, boy, that's really like unsexy. Now thinking to suck about vampire, <laughs> thinking like thinking like yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Think about. I'm still learning. <laughs> now, now think about like like some sort of uh, like sexy like Twilight version of this. It's like Bella. Ooh, I'll turn you. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what are you doing? Like, uh, kind of tickles. <laughs> there you go. I don't like that at all. I don't know. You're gonna. You're just gonna suck on a nine year old's neck. I'm not a yeah. fan of that. No, no. Anyways, guys, go on. But they. Uh, <laughs> there was a cool moment. So they. They did. They. They exit the lair and they know that they've got a little bit of time until nightfall comes through and come yeah. out. That shot of I had it in my notes of like the tear coming from David's eye. Love it. And and I, my notes were kind of like oh I I really like that but also like. Meh. You know, like, but it was real. Mm-hmm. It was a real tear from his prosthetic lenses or whatever that they were just like, it was our, it was our breakfast club yep. moment. I was the, the salad, the lettuce falling off the sandwich. It was oh, just the really? perfect, the perfect take to just be like, got it. Yep. Wow. He had to keep his eyes open, you know, and, and you can't blink, can't blink really with those. I mean, he, you can, but I, I think for that shot, they were just like, you got to keep your eyes open because you're in pain. And he really does look like he's in pain. He looks like he's sad. Yeah. Even without the tear, yeah. he looks very, very sad. It was. It's one of the most perfect shots yeah, I've awesome. ever seen. And it, like knowing that fact now, where the, the tear is real, and they just kept that take is is beautiful. It's so good. Turns out pain don't hurt. Pain don't hurt. So. <laughs> Except it does. Don't you worry about a thing. I'm Sean. <laughs> so if you want to, if you want to just completely erase the ace stand by me theory, 
from the planet. Let's assume we never we never talked about that. Okay. There is a theory out there that David is from the early 1900s and he worked at that hotel that that came in that fell in from the fault line, right. mm. which is how he knows everything about okay. the hotel and how he knows it's there. And in fact, there was an extended like ending scene that showed like them back in the lair and it showed like an old photo of of him from like the early 1900s inside the hotel. Very shining moment that I yeah. think it was a good thing that they did not do. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that would have been like, this is the fucking shining. But uh, that, yeah, that's the thought is that maybe that's where David came from. He's he's a hundred plus years old, something like that. And that he worked in that hotel. And that's when Max found him back in the day after that place fell in. I was, dig it. Was yeah. he wearing the bellhop jacket that Laddie wears? Correct. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's where he, that's where Laddie got it. That's where he like, got you it. You look cold, kid. Put this on. <laughs> um. All this final fight stuff, right? Um, do you guys? Uh, I love uh, it's the it's the prepare, preparation, like what home it, alone it's, it's like this rated R Home Alone or something. Going like to that, the church right? and getting the holy water is yeah. super funny. It is pretty awesome. And now I need this with just the. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's what I need now. I need you got it, buddy. Like, you got it, man. Thank you. Putting the garlic <laughs> in the tub. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, yeah, oh, the holy water. I bet that priest recognizes the Frog Brothers. And he's just he's just like, don't worry about them. They're fine. Sons of bitches. Uh, <laughs> Boondock Saints moment. Like, yeah. no, they're fine. No, no, no. Don't worry about them. They're fine. They're brothers. They're, 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 they're not. not they, these are strong. These brothers got a bond unlike any other. That's brothers. right. One of, them, one of them has a queer. Never mind. Uh, but now, like, when they, when they finally, like, I love how he kind of even says... Uh, he's like some. Sometimes they explode. Sometimes they implode. Sometimes they go out loud. Sometimes they go out quiet. You know. And I think each like there's vampires that do each one. Yeah. That that it happens or whatever. And then, but the grossest thing that is borderline just I don't know what you call it, Sean. It's like a horror. It's just blood gushing horror. Sounds like, good. Like whatever that's kind of referred to. Yeah. When the when the plumbing just goes yep. haywire, there's some sort of chemical imbalance in the pipes, and after the garlic bath, yep, or whatever, Nanook, fuck it, dude, that's Nanook the cook just, throwing garlic on that shit, just being uh, a good boy. That's Nook's right, my favorite character in this movie. I think so. <laughs> yeah. uh, most most pettable face. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, insurance ain't covering this house. <laughs> They ain't covering this. They don't have vampire insurance. They don't have nothing. No. So. Well, in Santa Carla, maybe they do, though. You think so? You know, like some guy's got a racket going, like, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll cover your house if the vampires get it. Yeah. As, as we'll see, the, gra- the grandpa knows about it, you know? Yeah. Do which, we? Do which we? Which is just a slap in the face. What? What is? What is? What are they implying here? Is grandpa a vampire? Is grandpa a vampire hunter? What what is being implied here? Either way, it's just like why does this movie exist if he <laughs> knows about it? Yeah, no shit. You know, like if he if yeah he's seeing what's going around uh, on around his house, or is he just well clearly he, maybe he's not a vampire because he's eating Oreos. Well, well, there are like, people that think he's half. Okay, and that he's a daywalker. Yeah, and that he does drink blood, but he drinks animal blood uh, to like keep himself oh, alive or genius. or his his little callings to uh to his mistresses ah maybe he's maybe he's you know getting blood donations from them somehow Get, or the blood donations are just killing the less dead i i don't know there there is there are, the pe- night. there are people that think he's full-blown vampire there's people that think he's half vampire there's people that think he's fucking vampire hunter that's been around forever because it seems like he's preparing for this the whole movie i was just gonna say at one point we actually see him putting in putting in new posts that are spiked yeah things like that yeah right so that's and maybe i don't know maybe maybe there's something in the uh root beer or whatever he's drinking that like you don't touch the that's second why he's saying, don't drink my animal blood that's he, oh see don't drink this yeah dude he comes cruising through his own house <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. That that blue hair blue haired puss just got him going. <laughs> got him going. So every time that, that blue haired bush baby is, got him going crazy, Woo! sending his own car through there. Do you guys like the ending? No, <laughs> I do, man. Like we'll get to it on my on my ending thoughts, but I do. I think it. There is a point where after they're like set up after their their home alone bit. 
Yeah. That I was like, I hope that this doesn't last forever because <laughs> like a lot of Good these, call. a lot of these movies for me anyway, the ending because I I talk about it sometimes where I'm like I don't take a lot of notes towards the end. Yeah. Just because it's it's the end and I know it's gonna happen. The hero is gonna be yeah. good. Especially we'll be done talking about it by then. Especially in 80s and 90s movies. It's going right. to happen that way. Um, but this, I'm like, it, th- I've been having fun, and I want to keep having fun, and I want to just kind of get out of here. And it kind of wraps up pretty pretty well for me. It, n- it doesn't over overstay its welcome at all, and I like that about it. Grandpa just saying, that's the one thing I couldn't stand is just the vampires. And then they're all like, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, they're kind of like they're kind of just like, wait a fucking second, yeah. you knew about this, yeah, and then it just cuts, it fades to black, and then they play People Are Strange again, and then they <sighs> do People Are Strange. So you think it's a it's a concierge jacket, Le- Lenny, La- Larry, <laughs> L- Lad- Laddie, Laddie is wearing. It yeah. looks like a Confederate jacket to me. Uh, Confederate. Nobody gives a shit about Laddie. Yeah. It's fine. And did Laddie die, or was Laddie still alive? I hope he died. No, I think Laddie's alive. Damn it. Alive and kicking, unfortunately. Ugh, that means they're going to have to take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because Michael and Star are not going to last. Star is, she, you know, she's a little out there. Michael's been through some trauma. Now Michael's like, you got Laddie. Yeah. Not even my kid. Yeah. Not even your kid. Nobody wants this. Nobody so you, wants Are this. you thinking, like, the death of David is, like, a little an- anticlimactic? Yes. Maybe? Uh, probably. I think you could have that argument, but I th- also think it's just like uh, the low budget aspect of it for me. Them them cutting the budget is like they had to kind of kind of uh, wrap it up, yeah, kind of quick. But that character just doesn't seem like he deserved that uh, out as quick. I guess if you if you would have if you would have made this into a Netflix series or something, or just I don't know. You would have found out that Max was the head vampire 15 minutes sooner or an episode sooner. Yeah. And then let it be a big final <gasps> battle kind of showdown thing. And I don't I don't know. They're just I didn't feel like I got a ton of that. It was just like, no, I'm the bad guy and I want the mom and yeah. that's it. And I want her to be mom to my sons. To my sons. I've been cre- and this is what I was going to say and is, grandchild he references how, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I, he, they're, they're referencing how they're a family. My boys, well, he yeah, killed my boys. He's like, yeah, uh, David and my, and the, and my boys, they've been, you know, misbehaving and doing all this stuff, and they know the rules that Dad, quote unquote, has set out for them. They're not supposed to come around the movie store. They're not supposed to go around the the house or maybe like the the kite with the weird right. bat face is like a, a sign that says hey we're gonna show up tonight uh, <laughs> it's like, this is it's, it's, it's the a bat sock sing- on the literally the sock the on the doorknob signal? yeah it's their ba- <laughs> <laughs> it's the ba- you know and so there's like these illusions of like family and building yeah, this yeah, family yeah. and Marco's the young one David's the old I don't know man I that's the thing I've said this about some other movies I just wish there was some more context going on yeah that stuff. So. Well, let's wrap this up. We've dissected this with a modern eye, and we have stripped away all the nostalgia. we got to give it a modern-day rating, see how it ranks for all of us. AJ, what do you got on this, man? You know, I, like I still had fun watching this movie, I think. Um, when I say I think. Uh, and uh, I got to watch it with a buddy who was uh, hanging out one time, too. So, so me and James were just chilling there and just watching this movie, and I had a lot more fun watching it with him um, because I watched about three times, I think, co- leading up to this, and uh, got the time that I watched it with him was the most fun. Right. And um, and so I think that's that's a big thing. Uh, do I care enough about this movie to try to like make it all the way through? Like every time I'm going to turn it on, and it's like I'm not, but I am going to watch it with my buddy. So, um, again, I wish there was some more context. I wish there was a little bit more, um, you know, I don't know, exposition, what what have you. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a a four point nine. Four point nine er. Damn. What dude. about you, Shauners? What was I nostalgic? You were uh, five nostalgically. Um, I think that the I this is the the vibe of this movie vibes with me a lot. Um, I I like the the coastal town. I like the tight knit group kind of thing. I like the vibe of I like the look a lot of the movie. Uh, I think it's 
technically uh, production wise made very well. Like I said, I really I really do appreciate the artistry of them cutting the budget and having to deal with that along the way. I like Joel Schumacher's steadfastness of his cast and that he believed in them, that he wanted to work with them. He didn't want to change for the studio at all. Um, I like that a lot about it, knowing that now. As a movie, I just it's just my aesthetic, and I, I like the vibe a lot. Um, am I going to revisit it? Every Halloween, probably not. But if like I I think about it, mm-hmm. uh, I'm probably gonna th- throw it on and and have a pretty good time, uh, whether I'm with people or not. Um, I'm gonna say I'm a seven. Seven for Sean. Uh, myself, you know, here's the thing. Like this is a very we're gonna this is one of those movies we're probably gonna piss some people off on. Okay, because people do very v- view this very highly. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that's because they're not able to strip away uh, nostalgia or just like, I just really like vampires and Mm -hmm. I just really like this, you know, like it's it's shot very well. And it it will always make me go, oh, Lost Boys, you know, like even Molly, I told her my rating. She goes, I thought you love that movie. You know, like she I was like, no, I just talk about it. It's just like, oh, it's Lost Boys. It's it's cultural. But like the story's just kind of they don't really explain anything. It just this time around trying to be critical. I just found myself going, mm, I don't really like this. Um, so it's definitely nowhere near the worst movies we have seen, nor that have been made. But for me, the way it struck me was probably a four point eight on this one. Oh, uh, executive damn. producer Josh Miller gets a little worse. He says, "I'm about to put the movie on to watch again. I watched it about a year and a half ago, and I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I hate it. It's an awful movie all around. Not good. I've heard grumblings when I go online. The rumors of a remake or a reboot." And people are like, no, don't ruin a perfect movie. I'm like, a remake can only improve it. <coughs> Wait. Ah, it was directed by Joel Schumacher. That explains a lot. He tried to ruin <laughs> Batman, too. <laughs> okay. After rewatching again, I might have been a bit harsh earlier. I still don't think this movie has held up well at all, but I don't hate it at least much as I did 97 minutes ago. But it's still not good. The premise is good enough, but the dialogue is bad. The acting is bad. The special effects are bad for a Richard Donner and Schumacher movie. I want to believe people remember this movie with rose-colored glasses, as I did, and have not seen it in years. I guess they should probably just leave it alone. It doesn't really need a remake or a reboot. People would hate it on principle, and I probably wouldn't watch it anyways. So my nostalgic score before tonight's rewatch was going to be about a 2.5. At the time, I'd rather watch Geely than this garbage. My actual modern-day score is a bit higher. I'll give it a 3.9. Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter is a much better vampire movie than this, as is John Carpenter's Vampires and Dracula 2000. You're out of your mind, Josh. Josh Miller coming through, baby. So that is a 5.15. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not the bottom. Keep that in mind. We've had many worse uh, scores than that. But that is um, coming in just below American Pie, just above uh, Ernest Scared Stupid. So it's above Ernest. Ernest Scared Stupid is a 5.13. Oh, so it's good now. This is a 5.15. You guys failed me. You guys failed this show. Uh, <laughs> it's a, Encino Man got a better rating than this. Mortal Kombat got a better rating yep. than this. Boondock Saints got a better rating than this. Absolutely Weekend not. at Bernie's got a better rating than this movie. We're very sorry. We're very sorry, Sean. This is what we do. This is a group. This is now gospel. Yeah. We may decide to make that change. You can go back in it's our true. episode where we all get to make one change. You can give it a 10. To try to bring that score up if you want to. Uh-huh. You're allowed to do that, and we're going to do that soon. Yeah, I'm excited for that. We I hope you en- want to waste the energy. <laughs> we hope you enjoy this episode, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Tune in next Wednesday for a new episode. It's spooky season still. So we will be doing Evil Dead, which was chosen directly by our Patreon members in a vote, which we all know AJ has not seen. We're just going to skip him over yep. in the <laughs> intro scene. We're just going to go right to Sean. Not even ask AJ for if you've seen it. And then follow that, we're doing an I've Never Seen, bringing back that segment. Uh, we're going to do Parenthood, strictly because Sean and AJ have not seen that, and there is a pretty immaculate all-star lineup of uh, cast in that movie. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, Back to the Future. It's finally going to happen. Oh, man. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. We did The Monster Squad. That was so awesome. That was the first time I had ever seen that movie, and I cannot wait to rewatch. Like, that is on my Halloween list. Boom. Definitely. It's on Love that fucking movie. Every damn year. Yeah. Yes, sir. And don't forget to leave us a voicemail. You can call us at 319-804-9596. Leave us some feedback like today's caller. Fellas. 
Mike, longtime listener from Canada, Dylan here, just listened to Fast Times at Ridgemont High with the uh, the twins. Also, how do you forget about Parent Trap, best twin movie of all time? <laughs> um, but I listened to the podcast for the first time with my mom, which was really strange because she was a huge fan of that movie. And she wanted me to bring up the fact that y'all missed the fact when Mr. Han was handing out sheets of paper and all the students were sniffing the absolute shit out of those papers because my mom said when she was in school you guys are a little too young for this now which is funny uh she said that the paper actually gave the students a bit of a buzz so you'll see the you'll you have to look back and see the scene where they're all getting the sheets of paper and my mom said they used to just sniff the shit out of the paper and just get a bit of a buzz off of it. i remember that anyway thanks for the podcast fellas can't wait to uh hear the next one yeah, I, I actually had that in my notes and I forgot to talk about it, but apparently it gave you just like a like a quick buzz. Really? And then apparently they, they replaced those machines with, they were called Ditto machines, which didn't give you a buzz, but it just had a really cool, awesome smell to it that <laughs> okay. people were just like, oh, yeah. I That's what that. I figured it was in that. Mo- in that. But yeah. I, reading that fact, I'm like, really? A buzz? Cool. Fascinating. Like, I just know yeah. all the people that I knew just got buzzed in the parking lot. And then <laughs> <laughs> you got to be like, Spicoli, you don't need that shit. That's true. Like, that's that's, that's going to bring you down smelling that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it today, AJ. Let's tell everybody how they can get us out of here. What do we got? You bet. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. Make sure wherever you're listening, you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. You can leave us a review, write one out for us. Tell us how much you love us or hate us. If you leave a one star review, tell us why. We want to know why. Other than that, though, guys, uh, all social media, find us at Confused Breakfast. Just about, just search Confused Breakfast. And, of course, ConfusedBreakfast.com. It's going to give you everything now, as you heard earlier, for uh, listening to the show, finding everything that is relevant with the show, right at ConfusedBreakfast.com. Go to that same damn website, and you can find a beautiful merch store with uh, some shirts that say Confused Breakfast on them. You can find some shirts that say Damn Dang It on them. Yeah. Find some shirts that say Prior, Prior and Son's Funeral Home. Yeah. Three, three funeral homes on them. Uh, you can get some coffee cups. Uh, whatever your heart desires, go get that stuff and uh, put it on your body. And best way to support this podcast, hit share on this episode right now. Put it out to all your friends. Also sign up for Patreon. Get bonus episodes every week. You get private Discord service. Vote on upcoming movies like our people did for our next movie. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. And on our way out here, we are coming live from our brand new studios here at LAS Media Group. They produce this show in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. You got to check them out at lasmediagroup.com. We are going. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Suck Joel, blood. Joel Schumacher. Bye, Michael. Joel no, Schumacher no. deserves some more I respect. Said, I'm your host, Michael. <laughs> Michael Schultz. <laughs> <laughs>